It's time to let your mind wander, Rebels. Into a world of stars and planets. Of lunar eclipses and poetry. We're going to hear the story of... The girl who solved the mystery of why the moon turns red. Have you ever seen a red moon? Well, it happens once every two and a half years. And one girl, named Wang Zhenyi, wanted to know why. Let's get settled in. Snuggle down, close your eyes, and begin to imagine. Let your mind go on a bedtime journey. Chen Yi loved to stare at the stars and solve math problems and write poems. She lived in China over 200 years ago at a time when women weren't allowed to go to school. But she was so curious about how the universe worked, so passionate about discovering the unknown, that she became her own teacher. She learned how to write poems from her grandmother. She learned how to shoot a bow and arrow from her warrior mentor, Ah. She learned about different cultures by traveling down the Yangtze River, or Changjiang, with her father. But guess where she learned about outer space, or what we call astronomy? She learned it from herself. When Zhen Yi was 10 years old, she traveled from her home along the winding blue waters of the Yangtze River. From Jiangming, or what we call Nanjing today, all the way to her grandparents' house far in the north, in a town called Jiling. Her grandparents' house had an arched roof made of gray tiles that blended into the night sky. On winter evenings, when the ground was wrapped in a cozy blanket of fluffy white snow and the air was still and silent, Zhen Yi would step out of her grandparents' book-filled home and look up at the starry sky. Can you see her now, standing in the night? as the moonlight touches her pearly skin and shines purple against her black hair? She is wearing a blue Changfu robe. The magical moonlight turns its wrinkles into waves like the flowing Yangtze River. One night in the starlit darkness of Jiling, Zhen Yi saw something she had never seen before. The sky held a full moon, but the edge of that moon was so bright, it looked like it was on fire. Slowly, the fire and darkness traveled across the moon until it looked like a red circle glowing from within. Zhen Yi was stunned. What was this magic that could turn the moon red, she wondered. She hurried back into the house to ask her grandmother. Nai Nai, Nai Nai, she said. What has happened to Yuliang, the moon? 
Her grandmother looked up at the moon, whose redness was cooling into the black of the night. She looked down at Zhenyi and said, There is much you still have to learn about the ways of the world. This is Yue Shi. The moon is being eaten by the dog of the sky, Tian Gou. Zhen Yi wanted to know more about Tian Gou, the dog of the sky. So every night, she stepped out into the cool winter air of Jilin and looked up at the sky to study it. She wasn't entirely sure the moon had turned red because of Tian Gou. The mystery was still unsolved for her. Every night, Zhen Yi climbed into her bed with a mind full of stars and planets and questions. And every morning, she jumped out of her cozy sheets to answer those questions. She would walk to her grandfather's books. He had more than a thousand of them. She would pick one about math or astronomy, sit at the wooden writing desk by the courtyard, and begin reading in search of an answer to the mystery of the moon. The rough pages would flip through her fingers like silk. As Zhen Yi searched for why the moon had turned red, the black brushstrokes of words and numbers rose from the pages and danced in her mind. The two intersecting lines of shi that marked the number 10, the sharp swirls that marked the word huo or fire. When she stumbled upon an interesting idea, she pulled out her four jewels of study, Wen Fang Si Bao. A sheet of paper, a block of ink, a dark inkstone, and a brush. She would drop a little water on the inkstone and grind the ink into a black pond, rich and deep as the night sky. She would dip her brush and begin writing her ideas onto the precious paper in characters, where each word was a picture overflowing with meanings. Sometimes a book was hard to understand, or a math problem was hard to solve. Zhen Yi would put her brush down. But she loved thinking about the planet so much, she couldn't stop. Her inner fire, her passion, her reqing kept burning, and she picked the brush back up. But on one such day, when Zhen Yi had set her brush down, she realized she could do an experiment. She took an oil lamp and two balls and held them up in a line. She saw how the shadow of the lamp fell on the farthest ball. She discovered that Tian Gou, the dog of the sky, was actually just the earth itself. The moon had turned red because the sun, the earth, and the moon were all in one line. When the earth is in between the sun and the moon, the sun's rays curve through the earth's atmosphere and fall in a red shadow on the moon. The red moon was a lunar eclipse. She had solved the mystery.
Uncovering the mystery of the red moon only made Zheng Yi want to learn as much about our universe as she possibly could. She eventually wrote 12 books, created her own styles of astronomy and poetry, and even wrote books that made math fun and accessible beyond the world of elite men, all without ever going to school. Zhen Yi was driven by her inner fire to learn and discover the world in her own way. Now, let's turn off the light if you haven't already and imagine yourself slowly floating down a river. When she was a teenager, Zheng Yi and her father spent many years on a boat, meandering down the turquoise waters of the Changjiang, the Yangtze River, twisting and turning between green mountains that rose into the sky like the spirits of ancestors long forgotten. At night, she lay down on the rocking boat under the starry sky with its night lights embracing her. Zheng Yi closes her eyes and imagines the magical silence of outer space. The breeze tickling her skin as she listens in the stillness to her inner fire, crackling softly, keeping her warm as she flows down the river into the adventures awaiting in her dreams, in her mung. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Katie Springer, with sound design and mixing by Craig Billmeyer. It was written by Tara Kola. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Our executive producer was Katie Springer. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel. Rebel.